Hypersensitivity reactions are exaggerated or inappropriate immune response to a benign antigen. It is the immune response and not the antigen that is actually harmful. An external antigen such as a drug, pollen, or food can elicit an inappropriate immune response. However, an inappropriate immune response to an internal antigen, such as your own skin or neuron, would be called an autoimmune reaction. Hypersensitivity reactions can be the mechanism of diseases in some autoimmune reactions. Hypersensitivity reactions are antigen-specific. It's antigen specific because the immune system is educated and primed towards the antigen after the first exposure. In this quick example, first exposure or first contact to an external antigen, such as a drug, pollen, or food, causes the immune system to sensitize itself towards the particular antigen. In other words, it primes the immune system against that antigen so when the next time the antigen comes along, the primed immune system, including the T cells, antibodies, and neutrophils, they can mount an exaggerated and an inappropriate immune response, aka a hypersensitivity reaction. But the immune system can cause hypersensitivity reactions in different ways. And that is why hypersensitivity reactions can be subdivided into four main types. Type 1, type 2, and 3 hypersensitivity reactions are antibody-mediated, whereas type 4 is a cell-mediated hypersensitivity reaction. I want to take a short break and introduce to you PDF Element. PDF Element is an all-in-one PDF editor from which you can get powerful features to edit, annotate, and convert PDF easily. You just open a PDF file. For example, here is a PDF on my inflammation video. If you want to add more information, you can add a text box. For example, here, complement proteins uh, circulate inactive, and once active, they promote inflammation. You can also change the size or the color of the text. There is even a pencil feature to add uh, so you can become more creative. Now, here, Activated B cells become antibody producing plasma cells. Important note. Now, PDF Element is a robust PDF editor, annotator, and converter on your Windows or Mac. It greatly helps to read, take notes, and convert PDF easily. Through this channel, you can save up to $60 on PDF Element by clicking on the link on the description below. I really recommend PDF Element if you want to get creative with your notes. Type 3 hypersensitivity, also known as immune complex hypersensitivity reaction, is a reaction where formation of the antigen-antibody complex deposit in tissues, activating complement proteins, and so the inflammatory response in the tissues. The antigen-antibody complex are the immune complexes, and these will circulate around the body. The immune complexes can be cleared by macrophages normally in the spleen or liver. But when not cleared, immune complexes will deposit into various tissues where they induce complement activation. Complement proteins are circulating proteins which when active trigger a cascade promoting the inflammatory response. External antigens that can form immune complexes when antibodies are formed against them, include foreign serum, such as anti-venom injections given to people, monoclonal antibodies people receive for treatment, as well as inhaled particles from work environment, and also bacteria, parts of bacteria, such as group A streptococcus. For the antibodies to be able to target these antigens in the first place, the body first has to be exposed to them. These external antigens are picked up by antigen-presenting cells, such as circulating B cells or macrophages. The antigen-presenting cell will process and express this antigen on its surface. The antigen-presenting cell will travel to nearby lymphoid tissue and present that antigen 
to T helper cells, which will subsequently activate the T helper cell. Activated T helper cells can also activate B cells, who may also have already picked up the antigen. The activated B cell now becomes a plasma cell, which are the antibody producing cells. The antibodies produced by the B cells are thus the antibodies against that specific antigen. Now both type 2 and type 3 hypersensitivity reactions actually involve complement activation. However, in type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, if you remember, antibodies bind to antigens that are bound to cell membrane surfaces or membrane surfaces. Once antibodies bind to the antigen, they then act as a bridge to activate the complement proteins. Whereas in type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, the antibodies produced bind to free circulating antigens. Once the antibodies bind, they can form chains of antigen and antibody complexes, which are the immune complexes. Immune complexes can then deposit into body tissues and then activate complement proteins. The structure of a typical antibody produced by the plasma cells are made up of the inner heavy chains and outer light chains. The top part here is the Fab region, which binds to the actual antigen. And the bottom part here is the FC region. The FC region acts as a bridge that will activate the complement proteins. So, a typical type 3 hypersensitivity reaction is the Arthus reaction. The Arthus reaction is the name given to the inflammation caused by the deposition of immune complexes at a localized site. An example of an Arthur's reaction is hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Workers, for example, exposed to different types of particles in the air, such as those working in the farms, woodworkers, wheat millers, are continuously inhaling these different particles. And as a result, the body may develop immunoglobulin G antibodies against that particle inhaled. When the particle is inhaled subsequently, the antibodies can bind to those particles, to those antigens, and form immune complexes with them. The immune complexes can then deposit into the tissues of the lungs. Deposition of the immune complexes will then activate the complement proteins. Complement activation results in three main things. Firstly, uh, release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, opsonization, which promotes phagocytosis through neutrophils, and thirdly, formation of the membrane attack complex, which will... Again, this is all a localized response. In contrast to Arthur's reaction, which is a localized inflammation, serum sickness is another example of type 3 hypersensitivity and is a systemic inflammatory response in the presence of immune complexes. Serum sickness can occur when foreign serum from an animal or monoclonal antibodies given for treatment result in adaptive immune systemic activation and production of antibodies against that foreign serum or monoclonal antibody. The body has sensitized itself essentially to this serum. Thus, on subsequent exposure of the serum, the antibodies that have already been formed will bind onto the antigens from the serum and form immune complexes, which will then deposit again to tissues. These immune complexes can actually deposit anywhere in the body because they're circulating, resulting in complement activation once deposited, Complement activation results in an inflammatory response. And of, of course, in this scenario, serum sickness, you get an inflammatory response systemically. The symptoms of serum sickness, such as fevers, urticaria, arthralgia, splenomegaly, typically will resolve 
once the immune system can actually clear up the immune complexes which have deposited. There are many other disorders where immune complexes play a role in the pathophysiology. These diseases include rheumatoid arthritis where immune complexes can deposit into joints. However, immune complexes most often target the kidneys such as in systemic lupus erythematosus, IgA nephropathy. And these immune complexes can easily deposit here because of the small capillaries in the kidneys. Post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a good example of type 3 hypersensitivity reaction and immune complex formation. Post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis occurs several weeks after a group A streptococcus infection, such as a strep throat infection. After the infection, the body will mount an immune response, creating antibodies against group A streptococcus. The IgG antibodies produced will bind onto the antigens of group A streptococcus. When bound, they will actually aggregate and form immune complexes, which will travel to the kidneys, to the glomeruli of the kidneys, and then subsequently deposit in the glomeruli of the kidneys, the capillaries within the Bowman's capsule. These streptococcal antigen antibody complexes deposit on glomeruli after which they fix complement, attract neutrophils, and start the inflammatory response. Very important to realize here that hypersensitivity type 3 reactions, again, can target external antigens, such as what we have learned, the foreign serum, as well as inhaled particles, but also it can target and, and, and immune complexes can form in, towards internal antigens such as seen in systemic lupus erythematosus. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.